Hey guys, it's Jim with V-Strom Garage. Today we're finally working on the V-Strom 1000. Uh, yeah, it's time to do the valves. So we'll get in there and check it. I'll try to take you step by step. It's about the same as the as the 05 I did before. A few little differences, but uh, yeah, let's get into it and see what we can do. All right, time is about 2.34, yeah, almost 2.35. So we'll see how long it takes to get down and get the tank and everything off. I'm going to pull the bike back just a little bit. Oh, Sadie, come here. Sadie, come here. You're going to say hi? You say hi? You see everybody? <laughs> I'm not going to show all this stuff up close because I have the other video how to remove the tank so I'm going to kind of just fly through this. Alright, can we just take that thing and pop it straight up. The two little clips. Yeah, since it's biking, it might be a couple days for getting back together. I right, just take all the bolts and put it back in the holes. So we started at 2.35, even with a five minute break. So that puts us at about uh, oh, 2.53. So what's that, about 15 minutes or so. So this is where it's going to differ a little bit from the 05. It's going to take the coolant reservoir and that bracket out of here to get to the rear, the rear valve cover. And I gotta see if I'm gonna, hopefully I'm gonna have to take these crash guards off to get to the, I don't think so. Time to pull the radiator and stuff. All right, let's take a quick pause and I'll get a game plan for this. All right, so we gotta take all this coolant reservoir stuff I just popped this little, the wiring harness little plug out of there so I can get to the 12 millimeter bolt on that side, that side I think I undo this hose and I believe that will just pop right out of there. We'll get that out of the way. Then we'll have to take the air box out. So we'll undo all of our sensors. Hose right there going into the air box. Then we got the we're gonna take this clamp off this. Oh no, sorry, not that one up here. Undo that clamp, and there'll be another one on the front. All right, so went ahead and take the top of the air box off. Filter out, and we're gonna undo our sensors off the air box. Get that one. Get this one. Find a little, there's a little tab with the tab right there. Pulls off. And have one more right here. Okay, so those out of the way, we should be able to get to our clamp bolt here. I believe instead of taking the clamp off the front one, I think we can just uh, push this rubber 
tube kind of in and leave that on there and pop the air box off around it. Get all that cleaned up in there. All right, so we've got that connector off, but we got to pull this vacuum line off from here too. And see, so I'm just taking kind of squeeze that to get that down through the hole. So we'll just leave that that uh, on there, and this air box should pull up after we get the vacuum hose and the other vent tube off there. All right, let's see if we can get this box off. Got this clamp loosened up. I'm going to try to squeeze this inner one and see if that'll stay on. If not, I'll get it off. Usually when they're new, they're a little more pliable. I got one more hose to take off on this right side over here. All right, so we got this hose coming off the, it's the I think it's the PCV hose. Okay, vacuum hoses off. We'll get this one. There we go. Now, let's see if we can get that to pull out. Double check my nose is hooked on there. There we go. Two vacuum lines over here. There we go. See, I just left that one on there, squeezed it, and pulled the box out. Otherwise, you have to try to get this clamp on this side. It's a little harder to get. Okay. All right, let me switch cameras. All right. So the box is off. So this was that other, I just made a little red mark on that, and we got the other, other one here, I think one's the, maybe the map sensor, and the other one maybe the, the math sensor, I'm, I'm not sure which one's which. So anyway, so we have to get in, take, sorry about that, so we got to take that off, so we can get to all these wires. To get that out of the way to pull this heat shield out of the way. So we'll loosen up the radiator and get all that going. All right, so now we're gonna take these radiator guards off here, these plastic things. So it's just the one one bolt in there, and it'll slide forward and pop right off. Right. 
wipe all this down. Kind of wiping everything down as I go. So we'll loosen up our radiator bolt here. There's one at the bottom right here, then one on the other side. And uh, yeah, I think this will move out of the way. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this coolant drained. So we got our drain on the clutch cover right here. Should be only a couple quarts that comes out. Yeah, it's going to make a mess. Anything to do with coolant, you're going to make a mess. Come on, baby. <laughs> That's a slippery little sucker. Is that coolant's on there? Okay, it feels like it's getting loose. Okay, so it's off. So it's not going to come flowing out right away, but once we we can either loosen up the this cap. Once we loosen that up, now we'll get a flow. And we can also loosen up the air bleed screw here. Can't get a grip on it. So, like I said, it should be about two quarts, roughly. We'll pause it while it's uh, draining the rest of the way, and then we'll come back. All right. Well, it's still dripping down there. I don't even know if two quarts came out of that thing. So I'm going to put that back on. Snug these up. I think the actual torque specs is this bottom one's like four foot pounds, and this one up here is like nine and a half, I think. All right, all right so now we can go ahead and get a radiator off. And, all right, so we got our upper radiator bolt. Some of the 10 millimeter ones. Put a cap on there so I don't drop anything in there. We got our lower one down here. Right on the valve cover. Right up here. I think that should 
be loose as it is. All right, so I'll probably go ahead and just pull the two radiator, radiator hoses off. And uh, you know, we'll figure out how that heat shield, so we got all the electrical that's hooked into the back of it, so we've got to pull it loose. So we'll figure that out. Or maybe it just pops right off there. I guess we're going to find out. I'll take this radiator hose off. Still a little cool in that one. <laughs> nice. That mention I hate cool. It's a bit of a drain like the old five. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Try the right side, lower one. See how much crap comes out of this one. Let's see if I can get this under here. So we've got our heat shield over here, I'm trying to see what's, there's like a little pin that it drops into right there. So either side, so that pops out. I'm trying to see. Something in the middle here too. Oh, it's a little, another little push clip. have left is the is the uh, overflow tube here pop off I need a pair of pliers get that thing to rotate a little bit Yeah, a little harder with his crash guards on there. So we're still going to have a couple uh, connectors from the fan that we're going to have to disconnect over there. So I'm just going to let that drain a little bit while we find those wires. Right under here. 
Sir. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our covers off here so we can set the timing. Is that a 10 millimeter, just like the first gens? Eight millimeter. Man. I went ahead and pulled one of the spark plugs too, just to. So this would be a 17, yep, yeah, still 17. So, so time of that, I'm gonna grab another rag. I'm gonna go ahead and take this valve cover off. Yeah, we'll just break them all loose a little bit first. go back on they get torqued down to ten and a half foot pounds. Cover bolts off. Now we'll get a little rubber mallet. Tap it off. Yeah, because you got your sealant on here, so sometimes it'll stick a little bit. Yeah, just a little tap. And you want to work these little half moon. Either leave the, let it come out of it, or work these things out first. But I think I, since it's stuck on there, I'm just going to take these off, leave that gasket on there, and pull it out of the valve cover. Okay, so you got your seal inside of here. So always make sure that came off with it. I'm just going to leave that just the way it is for right now until we go ahead and check our clearances. These, these gears look a little bit smaller than the than the uh, first gen. Can't say for certain, but all right. So now we're going to go ahead and set the timing at uh, top dead center of the compression stroke. So. When you're uh, turning from the, on the left side of the motor, you're always turning counterclockwise. Like on some sport bikes, you turn from the right side of the bike, which then you turn it turn it clockwise. So this is counterclockwise. So what I'm doing is I'm watching the cam lobes, and this this is the intake side. So when the intake is pushing down that valve, that means that's when that fuel is coming into the cylinder. And when... Okay, so now the, the valve is up. Now we should be getting ready to go on to our compression stroke. And we're going to look at our timing marks, but I can look at these. I know what directions those, those should be, so... It, once I get close to them, now I'll start looking inside the timing hole. Give this that quick. 
Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna turn it real slow until we see her. It'll say FT, which is, stands for front timing. And that'll go right in the center. I think that's it. Let's see. Right there. Okay, so now I look at the cams. And the cams are opposite each other. So on the front cylinder, that is going to be correct. Now we can get our fueler gauges out and we'll check our clearances. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and check our exhaust valve first. I got the, these fueler gauges. These are go, no go fueler gauges. So the first part of it, is eight thousandths and the second part of the fuel gauge is ten thousandths so the minimum spec on the exhauster is eight thousandths and the maximum is twelve thousandths so we will start with the eight eight and ten so, so the eight goes and the ten goes tens ten goes it's pretty smooth so I was, uh, I would probably say that's a 10. We'll, we'll go up to 11. See, let's check the other side. Right here. That's a good. Looks like that's doing good. So, what we're going to do is usually I just start off with the go no go fuel gauges, then I'll move to individual ones just to get an idea. Our intakes. Or from four to eight, so we'll start uh, five to seven and see what we got on those. So we got five, seven might be a little tight. Let's check the other one here. Okay, that one's. Six. Okay, so six isn't going. So this is a five thousandths on that side. And the six goes in easy on that side. So let's do. 7,000s. Okay, so that's going to be a 6 thousandths, and that's going to be a 5 thousandths on there. So we're still within lower than specs. So I'm not going to be pulling any cams on this one. I mean, yeah, I could go maybe one, you know, a half size shim on that one or, or one size shim and take it up to seven thousandths but uh, it, it shouldn't really move that much if it hasn't moved in the 16,000 miles we'll just check it again at, at 30,000 uh, yeah we get an exact reading on the, on the exhaust so we did the eight and ten let's go to Nine and eleven. So our nine's going in. Eleven did not, did it? No. And this one, yeah, it's pretty tight on the nine. Let me go to. Uh, this. I thought that one was loose on this side. Make sure I'm getting it on there. Yeah, one of those easier to come from this side, the top side. Yeah, so that's a that's a tight nine. 
Yeah, maybe we will be pulling this out. That's like a right at a nine. So, I mean, we're still two thousands from being out of spec. So, yeah, decision, decisions. I think I'm gonna leave it on this one. All right, so we'll check. We'll check. We'll check it again at uh, thirty thousand miles, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it is from there. If it still hasn't moved at thirty thousand, so then we know we're good. If it moved a little bit or any at all, then we'll go ahead and change the shims on that one. But uh, yeah. So I think we're good on that.